The snakes and ladders have continued as teams fight for a place in the top eight. We unpack the big moves and the missed opportunities. Concerns around a couple of young stars and have the Ds found a fix to their recent troubles? This is Access All Areas thanks to Crypto.com. His hand on it, Martin. Can he put an exclamation mark on it all? He wraps it up and puts a bow on it. Dacos! Oh. Dacos! Look out! It's a pivotal win for the Bombers. Essendon climb over Adelaide, take a big step towards finals football and keep their top four hopes alive. Great to have your company after a big weekend of football. Damien Barrett and Matthew Lloyd join me. Welcome, gents. Thanks, Dan. Uh, we only have to start with the Bombers. Your Bombers, Lloydie, because they're up into fifth spot now. An impressive win against the Adelaide Crows, and it was high stakes yesterday, but they got the job done. What did you like most? Oh, it was a huge game. I've loved their whole year, Nat, and uh, I know it said about a month ago that it's been the first time in a long time you can trust what they do. They have their own unique style. It's fast, it's dynamic, but... There's also plenty of pressure that they apply, you know, smothers like this from Guelphie and Zach Merritt's playing the best football of his career. I've been hard on Parrish, but he's come back in and he's playing awesome footy as well. And then you've got the kids, you've got Perkins and Hobbs and all this, this midfield time through the injuries. Hobbs' day first day. half yeah, was extraordinary, wasn't it, yeah, for a second-year player, Lord? Oh, he faded away in the second half. The back line's underrated, I think, in some yeah, regards. I mean, Zerk Thatcher's doing his role every week. It really went down with a knee, and as we speak, we don't know what damage uh, is going to be inflicted upon him by way of matches missing. But Redmond, Laverty, yeah. it's a good system. It is, and then... With a, so they bring this pressure, then they've got a, a capacity... So the panic set in, you know, Rankin doesn't get caught like that that often. You see the intent in, Merrick lets him know about it. That's the confidence they're playing with. But Nick Martin, he's in awesome form out on that wing and you see the chain here. So they get you um, pretty well. They do allow a lot of inside 50s, but they hold up pretty well. And then they just get you on the outside. And they did it last week to Port Adelaide, Nat, where they almost got there. So they can do it against the best sides as well. So they fully deserve to play finals footy this year with the type of footy they're playing. Nat, you personally have taken a great delight as a Hawthorne supporter. This footy club hasn't won a final since 2004. It's 6,000 plus days now. 6,888. Oh, you know the exact number? To be exact, yeah. Damo. Are you yeah, conceding right. that you might have to celebrate a finals win this year, a Bombers finals win. Can you see what colours I'm wearing today? <laughs> I'm dressed in Bombers colours. I'm on board. That was really exciting yeah. football that they played yesterday. It's entertaining and, hey, I think the drought has gone on long enough. So 6,883 days for those Bombers fans. Uh, hopefully that comes to an end uh, this season. Another big game across the weekend with huge ramifications from a finals point of view was Carlton and Fremantle. And the Blues have kept their finals chances alive. A month ago, they were ready to microwave their memberships, the Blues fans, but Lloydie, they've now won three games in a row and it was a complete domination. Yeah, and it stems off the back of... The, the pressure's been amazing. They only laid 30 tackles against Essendon on that Saturday night where they were embarrassed and probably lost their seventh or eighth in a row, Damo. Well, now they've doubled it and they're getting around that 60 tackle mark mm. and, and then their midfielders. So I think uh, Walsh, Cripps, Doherty and Chera have had an awesome three weeks. Yeah, it was a sixth game in a row, Lotto, that game. And yeah. it was an eighth of nine, eight, no losses. Yeah. And, and look, I, you do question the opposition. And you have to question Frio. We'll, we'll touch on them in a moment. But Gold Coast, the sequence started. Then Hawthorne and then obviously Fremantle mm -hmm. yesterday. Port Adelaide on, on the weekend upcoming. That, that, we're going to know more then, aren't we? What it has done, though, it, it's just changed the, the coaching doubt narrative from Michael Voss to, to Stuart Jew. And that's impressive in itself. He's been able to remodel this team at its lowest point, and, and to the board's credit, they removed a director who had links to, with someone who was making bad comments publicly. They stayed firm, and, and they've backed their system in, at least, and I think they're benefiting from that. And you can only beat who's in front of you, which they've yep. done the last three weeks, and then they, I think because the midfield's got on top and the pressure's so good, suddenly you haven't got Mackay and Kerno jumping all over each other, you're getting small forwards back involved in the game, Jack Martin's been good, so yeah, awesome three weeks for them. 
Damo, just on Fremantle, mm. super frustrating season. It's been a roller coaster, so inconsistent. And for a side that made finals yeah. last season, so disappointing. What have you made of Justin Longmuir? I mean, he's looked pretty frustrated at times. Oh, he has. Look, they're, they're very conservative by way of thinking. And, and I was really bullish on them after winning a final last year. I had them potentially top four if it all went well, but it hasn't gone well. And they're actually now benefiting from West Coast being so bad in their own home city that they're, they're, they're probably not getting the focus and, and attention they, they deserve because it's been ordinary. It's been really ordinary. And, and a lot of it has been their own doing. And they don't start well. So I wonder where they're at mentally as a football club. So yesterday was 4-3 three to three points. When they yeah. lost to the Giants, it was 4-1 to two points. And then we lost to Richmond over there in Perth. It was 4-3 three to 1-3. Three. So they've hardly won a first quarter all year. And to get to three-quarter time of a game against Carlton, which has had its own issues, with a scoreline of two goals eight, yeah. I think that says all that needs to be said. And the, the decision they made, Alex Pearce as captain, again, there's reasons they made that decision for him as leader, but the brave decision would have been Brayshaw and maybe Sarong is the person who's leapfrogged all of them. And I think that it's those sorts of decisions they're going to need to make in the off-season. All right, let's move on to the Cats now because they are back in the top eight. And I'm just curious, I, I guess, because they're, they're in the eight, whether they can still push for that top four spot. Chris Scott, their coach, says they can do some damage, Lloydie. I mean, where do you see the Cats and, and their place at the moment? I see them off the top three by a fair way. I think the top three are clearly ahead of Geelong. But uh, I think they're going to be flattered again by the run home with GMHBA where they're a different team. But I wouldn't trust them at the moment against those top three sides, say, at the MCG or at the Gabba or the Adelaide Oval, in my opinion. But for the competition, I hope they do make a good charge of it because I don't see too much outside that top three. Historically, we say clubs can't flick a switch, mm. but if there is a club yeah. that can in 2023, it's this one. And it's the, the wildcard element to it. If they, if they just get there, there's not going to be one team that's comfortable upon entering September And Jeremy with that Cameron being the case. back in against Essendon probably yeah. on Saturday night as well, which will be interesting. The two Scott brothers going head to head. Uh, just on North Melbourne, who Geelong beat comprehensively at the weekend. I mean, we talk about this every week on the show. The mm. football, it's so disappointing, in particular, Damo, from senior players who are letting down their teammates yeah. constantly. Now, Tom Hawkins taking a ball out of a, a boundary throw and kicking a goal, that, that's not a, a new thing. It happened in a grand final last year, but, but North wasn't set up for, for that, obviously, on the weekend. And you're right here. Now, take a look at Zeebel and Thomas here, two of the more experienced players, particularly Zeebel. Again, this happens. Henry got himself out the back, but this club hasn't not, not only hasn't improved, I, I think you can now argue it's gone backwards yet again, and, and that takes some doing, given the horrors of 2022 and, and 2021. They have had some turmoil, though, losing their coach for a, a period of time. Yeah, but they've also been able to replace him relatively seamlessly. Look at McDonald here. Now, again, I, he may have thought he heard something, but, but read the system and, and read the Look situation the yeah. and, and, and realise that everyone else should stop. Why, why aren't you stopping? I mean, Brett Ratanat, just to, back to your point, I mean, he was able to come in as a senior experienced coach and take over the Alistair Clarkson system. I mean, they, they wanted us to know that he's only um, taking over from Alistair Clarkson the way he played. It hasn't improved that. And, and Luke Davies-Uniac, again, there's bigger problems than what he's just done there, but that's not the sort of act of a, of a senior leader player. Well, well, the hope I got with Alistair Clarkson coming in was somebody could finally teach them how to win yeah. and, and put some trust in them. It's been, obviously, hasn't been able to do that for them and they haven't won for 15 weeks. So mm. it's the last one in round two. So that's the problem there. No one knows how to win. It's a loser's mentality and it just rolls on week after week. Well, they might have a chance. They play the Hawks uh, this Sunday. To the Ds now, and a crucial win for Melbourne against St Kilda on Saturday night. It gives them a little bit of breathing space within the top four. And how about Christian Petrarca? It was a f terrific performance. He's had his critics, Lloydie, when it comes to his goal kicking. But perhaps him spending more time up forward is the answer to fixing their attack woes. Yeah, I think it has to be. Like uh, Dustin Martin-style Toby Green, that you get goals from Christian Petrarca. Petrarca, no one else is going to kick them. Like He's the man that has to transform this team. You called for this, Lordo. You're too humble. Actually, you're not, but I'll say it, I'll say it on your behalf anyway. You, you called for this in the week leading into this game, that Petrarca had to play for. Yeah, I called for he and Gorn to try and change the fortunes of this fall. And they haven't kicked over 80 points for six, seven weeks. Mm. They're not going to win a flag with Ben Brown and Van Royen and all these guys down there, Chandler who's out and Pickett who's so, not So you, you stick with this plan now for the yeah, remainder for, of the year? For you know, over 50% of the game, yeah. he has to stay as a forward. 
you mentioned mm. Pickett there. I mean, Cozzy Pickett had uh, just the six touches against the Saints, and since he signed his contract nine games ago, he's averaged nine disposals and a goal per game. Does he need to spend some time in the twos, Damo? Look, it may be the case. I mean, other clubs are making tough decisions. I mean, there was a tough decision, I felt anyway, in the end, for, for Goodwin to play Petrarca Ford. I'd stick with him for another couple of weeks, but but he's got comfortable, I think, clearly since signing that deal. I mean, he started the season in, in blistering form where people were comparing him to, mm. to Shea Bolton and, and, and being on track for an All-Australian jacket. I mean, I know it was a small body of work, but he's nowhere near that right now. And, and you're right, I mean, the conversation may be had that he's actually going to have to drop a grade. Mm. To the power now, 13 wins in a row. They are absolutely flying and they flex their muscles in the third term against the Suns with a nine goal to one blitz. And they really showed Lloydy why they are one of the flag favourites. They, right, Nat. Uh, I've been part of good sides, I've been part of bad sides. And you have a belief about yourself when you're a great side that you just stick to what you need to do with your pressure and your system and your processes, and eventually the dam wall breaks. And, and you're attempting torpies yeah, from and, 58. And that's, <laughs> and that's the confidence they come off? they've got within <laughs> themselves. That there's, I know there might be a weakness in the rack or there might be a weakness in the key back, but you, when you're as uh, you're intense as good as this and your system and your belief in each other and your fitness is all there, they, they just don't believe they can be stopped. Mm -hmm. And even what Houston did last week, just a belief in himself to go back and do what he did. So it's been an awesome season. You mentioned that um, holes they've got in backline and, and ruck. And like said, yeah. we don't know if he's going to come back next week. But Mackenzie yeah. almost certainly going to miss. But the, the beauty they've got is that they've had a man who's been able to play Stanford footy as captain of the whole operation and still do it with some pride mm. attached. He gets to come back in. Yeah. And it's not the worst thing that can happen now with a captain resuming mm. yeah. in round 18 of a season where they've won 13 in a row. And Collingwood did that. Now, they had all these players out. They still found a way to just mm. tick over the wins. That's all they need to do. Now, I am a big fan of Bailey Humphrey, one of my favourite players going around. He kicked this absolutely cracking goal, but his mistake <laughs> was that he went searching for love and validation from the <laughs> wrong people. Look at this. And donuts. I don't know what he was thinking there. And I think someone might have flipped him the bird too. Connor Rosie, though, on the flip side, got a much better reaction for this ridiculous goal. High fives from the crowd, so you love to see that kind of reaction. This too, by the way, Lloydie, that was ridiculous. Yeah, it was. He's in unbelievable form, uh, Connor Rose. I'm not sure what Bailey was expecting with about 20 <laughs> Sun supporters in the crowd behind the goal. It was a little bit yeah. awkward. You might want to rethink that next time. Now, Saturday night was not a great night for the King brothers. We'll start with Ben King because he was subbed out by the Suns in the third term after having just the one touch. Now, Lordy, I know he's coming off a knee reconstruction. It's always going to take time, but the Suns just need more from him. Yeah, you can have a bad night, but you cannot be pushed under the ball and you can be not uh, be non-competitive in the air. And that's where, you know, one touch. Uh, and, and as I said, sometimes you're so low on confidence, you drop marks like this, yeah. that's fine. But it's when you start being beaten in the air like this where you don't bring the ball to ground, that's what frustrates his mm. coaches that much. You say bad night, but it's been a bad patch and yeah. a particularly bad fortnight. He, he was no good again against Collingwood the, yeah. the previous week. They're the most important two games of this club's season, maybe Stuart Dew's life and coaching life, and and then you dish up that. Yeah. And I had no issue with Stuart Dew no. subbing him out. No, he's a competitor and he's a proud guy, so he'll bounce back. Um, for his brother Max at St Kilda, unfortunate news that he's now going to miss the rest of the season with that shoulder injury. And the Saints actually did really well to cover his absence at the start of the season. They went 4-0. and oh. Can they still stay in the eight and maybe, maybe even push for the top eight demo, uh, sorry, the top four without him? I don't see top four, Nat. Um, having said that, I've had doubts about them. But I, I, like you said, I was mm. impressed with how they held themselves together against Melbourne. If it wasn't for Petrarca's supreme form, yep. they might have been a, a chance. They lost Cordy with a concussion and also Seb Ross went down early. Look, Ross' line just keeps them together, but he's just... They're making up numbers. I, I hate to say it, and I don't mean that to sound uh, disparaging, to a team that's had a, a really good season under all circumstances, but they're not going to compete at, they've at the highest. Good, they've got a good month. It's the Suns in uh, yeah. away. That'll be tough. But yeah. then it's uh, North, Hawthorne and Carlton, so it's there for them.
All right, well, we've spoken about the bottom teams playing opposition teams and players into form, and the Eagles did that for Jack Gunston, who returned after being dropped by the Lions after round 13. Six goals and 15 score involvements. It was a pretty impressive performance. Yeah, it was, Nat, but I, I do have the, the asterisk on it, um, given the opposition and, and what it actually means. I mean, let, let, let's see what it does mean when, it, when it's a, a meaningful opponent. I, I, I fully get Chris Fagan bringing um, Jack Gunston in. He, he talked him into leaving Hawthorne to, to become a Lion for this year. It hasn't worked at this point. He's invested in his players as much as any coach is in the system and just as they've given Gunston a game back uh, this weekend, I'd expect him to give Daniel Rich a, a chance as well before the season's out. That's the sort of coach he is. But I mean, this is all really impressive, but Jack Gunston's done this for uh, 10 years in the AFL system. I, I don't know what to make of it fully now. So they play Melbourne at the MCG. Obviously. Let's see what he does there. That hoodoo's yeah. going to come up again, but let's see what he does there. I want to talk about the Western Bulldogs now, and I'm really struggling to, I guess, decide whether they're a legit contender or not, Lloydie, because you look at their record uh, against top eight eight sides. They've only beaten the one and that was Brisbane back in round three. Are they legitimate? This probably gives you the answer that no, they're not a legitimate premiership chance. Uh, they might win a final, potentially two, but I think this tells you that uh, they're, they're not good enough to win the premiership this And there's year. sequences of goals that go against yeah. them in those losses, aren't there, Lotto? Yeah. Which is damning and has gone back to the, the 2021 grand final. Yeah, just can't stop run-ons. Uh, conceded uh, 75 points in, a, in between like two quarters across the week. But I like their performance against the Western Bulldogs. Uh, sorry, against Collingwood, Collingwood. but just yep. not good enough. Uh, speaking of legitimate contenders, what about the Giants, Damo? Because they've now won four games in a row. They're still continuing that charge. They might scrape into the top eight. It's mm. a big game against the Crows this weekend. Possibly the uh, old cliche eight-point game. What, yeah. what do you make of the Giants? Uh, again, not, not wanting to defer an answer, it, it <laughs> was against Hawthorne that they won on the weekend and struggled to do so. Um, having said that, it was their fourth in a row. Love how they've got themselves together under Adam Kingsley. Um, game on against the Crows, but we know what the Crows do. They lose away and then come back and then uh, bamboozle us all and we make us think they're a good team when they win easily at home. All right. Speaking of looking ahead, don't forget to put your tips in for the AFL's official tipping competition thanks to Crypto.com. I want some early bold tips ahead of round 18. Friday night, the D's and the Lions at the MCG you, Lloyd. You just can't tip Brisbane at the no. G, so no. Melbourne. I can tip Brisbane at the G, Lordy, so I, I will. Yeah. <laughs> OK, I like that. Saturday night demo, Carlton and Port at Marvel. Oh, I think Port's vulnerable, which is a silly thing to say after 13 wins in a row. Last chance for Carlton, obviously, from a finals perspective. And early in the week, tip, Blues. <laughs> yeah, Port Adelaide. OK. Jeez, I don't know what you're on. No, no. <laughs> uh, time now for quick gives. And, Lloydie, we start with you. If both coaching positions were up for grabs, which senior coach job would you rather take on in 2024, Richmond or Gold Coast? Uh, the list, Gold Coast. But in terms of the club, Richmond, I'd, that's the place I'd be because such a great club. Uh, to you, Damo, without naming names, was there a bit of fattening of the farm over the weekend with some particular <laughs> players? You know, I'm going to name names. Yeah, I want you to. Oh, yeah, Actually, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I think there, there was. I mean, Jack Billings is a good player, mm. but, but to come in for his first game this late in the season, I think there's an element of that potentially. I know they've got a few issues. I think um, Tom DeConing's place at the, in Carlton, now I know he's injured, and that was originally missed on the weekend. I reckon how he's used in the remaining matches this year could be a, an example of that. Maybe even uh, your boy, Denver Granger, Barras. I'm, I'm not sure, Nat. So, Straight swap for the number one yeah. pick if West Coast get it. Not number one. <laughs> hey, uh, the venue's the MCG, so to you, Nat. The game's Port Adelaide versus Brisbane. Mm -hmm. Who wins? Port Adelaide. Yeah, you can't trust the Lions, as we discussed. Fair enough. Damo, will <laughs> any priority picks be dished out by the AFL this year? I, I really hope not. The, the, the problems of North Melbourne and West Coast aren't going to be solved by an extra pick. It just doesn't work. And, and their problems are not competition problems. And I'm big on, you know this, uh, mm. no more priority picks under any circumstances. I hope that happens this year. Lloydie, who would be more important to the Cats team next season? Asava Radigalia or Tom DeConey? Oh, that's a good one because it depends what you're looking for. Mm. They're so desperate for a ruckman at Geelong that uh, De Koning could be more important than Radigalia, where they can get by. Oh. To you, Nat, uh, there's been a lot of talk about the spirit of cricket. Are there any examples of spirit of footy with guidelines that players shouldn't cross? I don't want this show to go on for an extra 10 <laughs> minutes, so I'll try and keep it short. But staging and diving for free kicks mm. is one for me that should absolutely be out of the game. And shoving players into the fence or down after a tackle, I don't like that either. But we'll uh, move on. Lloydy, should David Warner play in the fourth test? Uh, no, he shouldn't, and I'd move Travis Head. You've got to be bold. I know it's been a bold from both teams and Baz Ball and all that. I'd 
put Travis Head to the opening position and bring Cam Green. Speaking in. of bold, you could have stayed up to watch the well, Ashes last night. You went to bed. I know, I know. <laughs> Some of us I'm endured it, Lordo, and <laughs> we benefited from it. Um, I'd leave him in that if you're going to ask me that question. Mm. Just give him one more go. He made 60 one at Lords. One more go. How long can we say that for? <laughs> he uh, made 60 This is a guy that ticks Carlton, test. okay? So we all know. Uh, last one for both of you. Music after goals, yes or no? I'll Amen. come around to this. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I, I don't like the, um, the the blaring out of the speakers at every moment, but I like the music after. I'm getting tired of Joey's Danaher's one from um, Frozen. Frozen but, uh, <laughs> no more country road take me home. Thanks, Charles Cameron. Uh, time now for our crypto brave play, and we're going to go with experienced umpire Simon Meredith from Thursday night. Nick Voston was caught with the footy deep in defence. You can see that here. And then he questions the umpire's call, and I quite like this retort. Take a listen. No, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> not for me. No, I, I like that. I love that. I, I, that's the way it should be. But clearly dissents off the table, isn't yeah, it? I right. mean, Stephen Killio had a free kick and 50 paid against him for basically raising an eyebrow at the start of the <laughs> season. So you could now say something's embarrassing. Yeah, I yeah. like it. Very, very quick uh, from Simon Meredith. Now, how about this bold play too from Eric Hipwood? Zach Bailey was not impressed one bit. This would have been a goal for him. And Lloydie, Eric Hipwood has just stolen it from oh, him. He's filthy. He's, Zach Bailey is absolutely filthy. But I can't say too much because I did some shocking I was going to say, <laughs> did I was, you? Yeah, I did it to Paul Barnett in search of breaking <laughs> Coleman's 14 goal record at the MCG. <laughs> I stole some bad ones. <laughs> so apologies to Paul Barnard if you're still if you're watching this one. <laughs> oh, I love it. That is all we have time for on Access All Areas. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget AFL Daily every weekday morning for all of your footy news and footy feed, of course, to wrap up each day. We'll be back next Monday with plenty more.